Hi viewers, now we will see care of patients with splint. I am Dr. Kali Selvi Xavier, Professor in Triplum College of Nurse. Objectives of today's class, the students will be able to meaning the splint, list down the purposes of the splint, explain the what, how, where, ab who, about splint, describe the types of splint, explain the general principles of splint, enlist the material needed for the splint, Explain how to apply the splint, specify the complications may occur after splinting, mention the checklist for the patient with the splint. Due to accident, assault and injury happening in our daily life, so to take care of the patients immediately, splint is very much helping to mobilize the patient from one area to other area. So, it is a device which is used for the immobilize of the limb and joint. It is a material used. The splint is a now most common type of splint used for the patients with the fracture and dislocation. Here the meaning a splint is a supportive device used to keep in place any suspected fracture in one's arms or leg. Purposes to provide pain relief for the fractured limb, supported bone, ends of the fracture site bones ends of the fracture site are very sharp a splint helps prevent bone protruding through the skin soft skin and tissue damage as well as the bleeding it facilitates safe and seamless casualty transport what means the splints are most commonly applied to the immobilized site of the injury to elevate the pain the emergency and temporary measures and if it is a diagnosed site of the injury can continue to be splintered for the particular period of the time when before uh, confirm the surgery and post to immobilization and functional splinting also to be done and how the application of the splint is a non-invasive but uh, sometimes painful procedure analgesic may be provided to reduce pain before splint applicants where the extremity is performed in Inpatient and outpatient healthcare settings and in the community. Who are all applied for the splint? The nurses, physicians, middle level practitioner, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, emergency medical, respondents, appropriately trained lay persons. The splint used to by emergency medical respondents to temporarily immobilize to of uh, fracture limb before transporting the patients for further treatment. To immobilize the joint, uh, promote joint healing by athletic trainers to immobilize on injured bone or joint before transporting the injured bones. And also by emergency room clinicians to stabilize the fractures and the sprain before uh, patient's assessment by the orthopedic clinicians. The continuing, th continuing to that, the reporting the patient's concerns regarding the splint, it is usually appropriate for the family members and also to, uh, whoever the caretakers to be present during the procedure. The presence of supportive adult is important for children who require splint applications because of the adult's presence will likely to reduce the child's anxiety and also getting questions. There are the many types of materials used, the plaster of Paris, fiberglass, plastic, aluminium, performed, uh, preformed, preformed plaster also. The splint materials should be light, weight and rigid. So other two types of flexible one, rigid is the second one. Rigid splint, uh, any rigid object such as wood, plastic board, broomstick, book, rolled out newspaper which are can be used for the splint, fractured arm or leg. The flexible splint, uh, any flexible object like a pillow or a bed sheet uh, with several folds, this type of used uh, foot angle and joint fracture. The other, other splint type, it has the indication also dorsal wrist sprain or soft tissue injuries of the wrist, volar wrist sprains or soft tissue injuries of the wrist, thumb spica, immobilis immobilization of the thumb, radial gutter, immobilization of the middle finger, ulnar gutter, immobilization of the third or fourth fingers, sugar tang, immobilization of the wrist and elbow following fracture of the proximal forearm and of bone surrounding the elbow joint, anterior posterior fracture of the distal bones of the forearm, posterior long arm, fracture of the bones of the forearm and the bones surrounding the 
elbow joint posterior gutter fracture of the upper tibia fibula or bone surrounding the joint knee joint uh, stirrup uh, short leg uh, soft tissue injury or bone fracture of the ankle what is medical sling and bandage the medical sling is a piece of cloth used to, to immobilize the fractured arm to the rigid splint in 90 degree or elbow flexions okay the sling usually takes shape of the big triangle it is used along with the instead of the rigid of the splint okay if used alone sling should be supported with the additional bandage which is actually uh, folded drape 5 to 6 in inches rich what are the general principles of splinting several ways are there to adapting the splinting first of all to identify the fractured site second stop the bleeding using bandages put uh, but uh, avoid pressing on the fracture painful and uh, uh, deformed site in case of bone fracture where bone ends protrude through the skin don't push uh, these ends back in place as this will cause inflammation and acute bleeding keep the fractured bone uh, motionless as indicated here under okay if the lower arm is fractured keep the wrist and elbow joint motionless and if the upper arm is fractured keep the shoulder and elbow joint motionless if the lower leg is fractured keep the knee and ankle joint motionless if the upper leg is fractured keep the knee and femoral joint motionless what are the other principles splint should be tied firmly to immobilize the fractured limb then check uh, for blood circulation to ensure the splinting is not too tight correct splinting provides pain relief if the fractured limb is bent with a sharp bone end protruding through the skin keep it motionless splint a limb as you find it is make it is comfortable to the patient as well as the possible if an ambulance is called and it is in on bay don't splint the fracture limb and wait for the ambulance team to be used for the specified medical set what if the splint itself is broken most cases joint fractures are very painful in in this case never try to relocate the joint least you should damage the nerves and the blood vessels surrounding the joint let alone the acute pain resulting okay you should have a over active imagination when dealing with such injury you can splint the joint as you find it if the materials are needed for the splinting a splint rigid or flexible the thick bandage it is optional rope or the like uh, wrap the uh, to wrap the splint to the fracture limb if the material is not available don't worry he can tie the fractured arm to the patient's body using dressing can tie the fractured leg uh, leg to the patient's other leg using the dressing can tie the fractured finger to the patient's other fingers using a dressing how to apply the splint to an extremities the first point is to perform hand hygiene and don ppe if exposure to body fluid is anticipated the second identify the patients according to facilitated protocol establish privacy by closing the door to the patient's room and also provide privacy introduce yourself to the patient family members get to getting the coping ability and to reduce the anxiety and improve the knowledge of the patient as well as the family member determine if the patient and family member special considerations according to communication literacy illiteracy language barrier hearing impairment uh, or anything is there the arrangement to meet the spe- meet the me- special needs of the patients Pro- professional certified medical interpreters either in person or via phone when language barrier exceeds explain the procedure for applying the splint and its purpose and what are the emotional support is needed to be given and encourage anxiety relief technique relaxation ex- exercise deep breathing exercise meditation all um, anti anxiety drugs everything to be exit the patients as the patient general health conditions vital signs and pain assessment and the prescribed analgesic and beginning of the splinting procedures and position the patients privacy comfort accessible raise uh, bed to height and if necessary remove the cut away the patients clothing remove the any jewelry accessory affected limbs 
assess the site of the injury avoiding unnecessary movement fracture site site dislocation minimize pain uh, potential damage of the soft tissues and blood vessels perform neurovascular assessment if necessary the patient he or she can move the affected extremities well we can assess it dressing to any wounds on the affected limb apply you have to be apply apply the splint according to orders of the treating clinician facility protocol and manufacturer instruction measure the area to be split here we have to evaluate the chosen splint to determine if it is if it will fit depending on the type of splint adjust the material to the size necessary to extend across the joint and that is next to the affected area be aware that some splints are made for right or left limb or right or left side of sides of the limb if the splint does not have a padded inner lining wrap the area to be splinted with padded padding material to minimize risk of friction related soft tissue injury okay secure the splint with elastic bandages will grow straps on uh, or assess patient comfort with the applied splint apply ice to the site if ordered or ameliorate uh, pain and swelling frequently reevaluate check the vital signs to prevent the shock and result fracture related weight loss assess the neurovascular uh, status and site for the splint using the previous and initial neurovascular assessment has to be done perform neurovascular assessment according to the protocol 1 to 2 hours for the first 24 hours complete assessment in both affected and unaffected area to be done okay color and temperature of affected area to be assessed pain assessment to be done and evaluate the capillary refill by applying pressure 2 to 3 seconds of the nail buds to be affected area to be assessed the nail buds should return to the normal within 3 seconds palpate for the presence of the pulse checking the unaffected extremities first and comparing with the affected extremities and treating clinician immediately if the pulse is absent and inform uh, which is a part is affected vascular impairment immediately to the physician assess for the paresthesia including tingling numbness burning sensation decreased sensation feeling and pins and needles and affected extremities by lightly touching prox proximal and distal area of the part assess unaffected extremities evaluate the affected extremities paralysis paralysis and as ask for the patient to move the extremities distal to the affected area how to apply the splint to on extremities continuously assess the affected extremities of swelling okay we have to assess and tightness and also fitting of the uh, site and comfort pain level and the uh, usual procedure materials hygienic and plan for appropriate documentations and the uh, date and time and material and type of the splint to used everything to be medication which are, which is given everything to be noted and the level of pain and city neurovascular skin conditions okay the immediately the following the unexpected any problem or the uh, family members education everything to be given complication that may occur uh, while using the splint increased pain it is not helped by pain relief and rest swelling numbness blueness paleness discoloration everything happen pins and needles and patient is unable to move the joint not included in the splint the patient will uh, feel burning sensation under the splint and discharge smells splint becomes loose or right checklist for a patients with a splint elevate the limb with the splint check skin daily for redness shows and contact fractures clinic immediately uh, check straps are firm but not tight and or supporting the injury check position of the splint and it is supporting your injury follow manufacturer guidelines which will be given to you these are all the reference referred thank you